Good morning, everybody. I'm Jim Hoffman. I have the privilege of being pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church here in Midtown, Kansas City. Uh, this is our Friday morning devotion, which I'm recording um, and posting on Facebook for all of our friends. I'm doing this a little early because I have a tea time at 1050 to go play golf today. So it's my day off and I'm going to go enjoy a little bit of time with a couple of my my friends. So um, our devotion for today, uh, the scripture comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 to 19. We'll read that, and then our devotion is written by A. Mattingly from Texas. So let's read out of Philippians chapter 4, beginning in the 10th verse, and we'll read to verse 20. This is what Paul writes to the church at Philippi. It's his closing part of his letter. He says, I was very glad in the Lord because now at last you had shown concern for me again. Of course, you were always concerned, but had no way to show it. I'm not saying this because I need anything, for I have learned how to be content in any circumstance. I know the experience of being in need and of having more than enough. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every circumstance, whether full or hungry, or whether having plenty or being poor. I can endure all these things through the power of the one who gives me strength. Still, you have done well to show your, show, uh, share my distress. You Philippians know from the time of my first mission work in Macedonia how no church shared in supporting my ministry except you. You sent contributions repeatedly to take care of my needs even while I was in Thessalonica. I'm not hoping for a gift. But I am hoping for a profit that accumulates in your account. I now have plenty, and it is more than enough. I am full to overflowing because I received the gifts that you sent from Epaphroditus. Those gifts give off a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice that pleases God. My God will meet your every need out of his riches in the glory that is found in Christ Jesus. So let glory be given to God, our Father, forever and always. Amen. Uh, the focus verse that uh, Mattingly pick, A. Mattingly picked was, Paul wrote, My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And here's his devotion that he wrote for today. He said, During my first backpacking trip, I wasn't it wasn't far into the trek up the mountain before I realized that I had grossly overpacked. As I struggled, I saw a member from our group, whom I had yet to meet, coming back down the path toward me. Please, Lord, just let him wave and pass by. Nope. He stopped dead in front of me with his hand outstretched, saying, Hello, I'm Jay. Would you like me to carry your pack? My mind screamed yes, but my lips uttered, no thanks, I've got this. My pride was totally opposed to accepting help. He turned, and we climbed together. When Jay continued to ask if he could carry my load, I finally relented. I had prayed for strength, but God had something else in mind. Sometimes receiving God's provision requires a sacrifice on our part, like giving up our pride in self-reliance. This sacrifice is not for God's benefit, but for our own. When we are no longer distracted, burdened with guilt, or full of pride, our ears and our hearts are more open to God. Then we are free to sense God's message in the words of a song, see God's plan in the order of nature, or feel an unexplained peace deep within us during a crisis. Thought for the day was, today I will set down my burdens so I can welcome God's strength. Uh, this time last year, uh, I was just getting home from a week-long trip with three other compatriots uh, of St. John's. We had taken an adventure to go hike from rim to rim the Grand Canyon, north rim to south rim, which is about 23 some odd miles, um, and it goes 7,000 feet down and 5,000 feet back up kind of in elevation. 
And uh, the interesting thing about that is, is um, I would have never, ever, ever thought of doing that on my own because I had no experience distance hiking. Right? I mean, I've, I've been down some trails as a kid and, and our limited experience in, in some of our prep work was hiking about six miles or so around Shawnee Mission Park, but not a 20 some odd mile hike uh, through a canyon that went down and came back up. I, I had zero experience at that whatsoever. Right? Luckily, one of us did. Um, one of us had been on the trip before. One of us knew what to expect. One of us knew how to plan for the whole thing, what to take, how to prepare, all those kinds of things. The other two that were, were part of our party had also uh, that kind of experience. I was the novice of the group. Okay? Luckily, I had them to help me prepare, so I knew what I needed to take and what I didn't need to take. And from that, I was able to carry my own pack all the way down and all the way back out. Luckily for me, I didn't have to worry about my pride in, in that circumstance. But, you know, there have been moments in, in my life, and I would guess that there have been moments in your life, too, where you might have gotten in over your head on something. Um, and you might be unprepared for it. You might not have the right skills for it. And before you know it, you're really struggling to get through whatever it is. And from that, somebody comes along and offers you help and your pride takes over. Right? And you just say, no, I'll figure it out. I got it, you know, kind of thing. I probably have had those moments myself, you know, where, where my pride has taken over. It's, it's fascinating, though, that we may eventually get to the point where we do break and we do finally get to the point where we give in and we say, you know what, maybe I don't have everything in my life in hand. Maybe I don't have all the skills that I need to be able to do everything that I want to do. And you know what, maybe it's time for me to learn a little bit of what it means to rely on other people, to let other people help. To give other people the chance. Right? Uh, at the size of congregation that we are at, um, luckily we're at the precipice and the point where uh, Jim shouldn't be doing everything for our congregation. And, and luckily we have a really great team of folks that in, are empowered to be able to do specific kinds of ministries so that we can share in this rather than me and my pride taking over and trying to do everything and ultimately getting to the point where some of it fails. Right? We're better off when we share the load with one another. We're better off when we find our, our skill sets and we live into those. I think it's hard sometimes for us to get past our pride. We do want to be self-reliant. We do want to be self-sufficient. Um, we do want to be seen as capable. Um, all of these kinds of things play into it. And yet what we should know is, is that this is a joint effort. Life is a joint effort in many, many ways, right? And because we allow ourselves partners in this, we allow ourselves partners in ministry as well. From that, when you're not trying to do everything, it gives you space. That's the key. That's the joy to this is, is you have space. You have space to be able to think. You have the ability, as, as this young person says, you can have ears to hear. You can have a heart that's more open. You might be able to sense freely the message of God that, that God has for you that day or the order or the plan that God has for you today. Or you might experience some unexplained deep peace that day because you've got others that you're sharing the load of work, the, the message with. I think that's the beautiful beauty of um, our community of faith is we've got great people who are willing to come and shoulder the work with one another that will lend a hand that are there to do ministry together, that we don't operate very often in silos, but rather we do this as a community that's united in the love of God. And from that, 
we take an opportunity to share one another's burdens. Maybe in this, you can also learn some contentment. Right? Just because you, you give someone else part of your burden doesn't mean that now all of a sudden you can go pursue something else right? and overload yourself again. Maybe it gives us the opportunity to think about what it means to be content with where we are, who we are, and what's the level of load that we can carry, and content that we can give part of this away as well. That we don't need to go seek to pick up something else, but rather to simply live into the part and the role that God has given us. I hope today that you'll see that you don't have to carry the full weight of whatever burden you have or the full weight of responsibility for maybe part of our ministry. There are others who would walk alongside of you gladly, joyously, and others who would shoulder part of that burden for you. If you'll simply relent, if you'll let go, and if you'll let them help. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. Think about what your burden is today, what it is that you're carrying, and who it is that's offering to give you some help. Dear God, we thank you that you help us to release our pride so that we may trust in your provision rather than our own. We thank you for those that come to walk alongside of us. Help us to let go of our pride, help us to relent so that we might share the burden and the load with those so willing and gifted to help. Give us the strength to live into that, and we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, everybody, for joining me today. I appreciate you being here. For all of you that will watch uh, today, may God bless you on this beautiful day. I love the sunshine. Barbara Mueller and I are going to be so happy with all of this. But I hope the rest of you enjoy this beautiful Friday afternoon. I will look forward to visiting with you again tomorrow at 1145 on Facebook Live. Take an opportunity, if you have a moment as well, to share this on your own news feed so that others might have a chance to share in our ministry and our devotion time. Otherwise, God's peace and grace be with you, and I'll see you tomorrow.